Hello, everyone, and welcome to Once Upon a Time in Black History. I am your host, Tamara Shiloh. I'm an author, educator, and owner of the Multicultural Bookstore in Richmond and in Las Vegas, Nevada. My podcast can be heard on Anchor, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and SoundCloud. So check us out and be sure to visit my website at Once Upon a Time in Black History. All right, so today we're going to talk about music, specifically a violinist. So here we go. 19th century Black instrumentalists held a special position in America's rural South. In the antebellum slave quarters, according to historian Paul Simbala, they earned status of a folk elite because of their contribution to community life. By post-Civil War times, though, opportunities for Blacks to break into music genre as professionals began to swell in the northern cities. Joseph Henry Douglas, concert violinist and grandson of abolitionist Frederick Douglass would be among the first. Not much has been recorded about Douglass' early life. He was born in Washington, D.C.'s Anacosta area. He was the only child of Charles and Mary Elizabeth Douglass, who lived to be an adult. He developed an interest in music early on as he was influenced by his father and grandfather. Both men were amateur violinists. He was formally trained at the New England Conservatory. Now that's in Boston. And it was called and later they named it the Boston Conservatory. This influence and training would lead him to become one of the first African-American performers to be national, to be nationally and internationally renowned. It was at age 22 that he received his first break as a concert violinist. He performed at the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition. That would later be Chicago's World Fair. Several black performers had joined together during the event to celebrate Colored American Day. Really? (laughs) Douglas' groundbreaking performance drew a large crowd of followers. It proved a leap to prominence. The world was beginning to know and appreciate his talent. After the exposition, he... A then sought-after performer became the first black violinist to make transcontinental tours. He was lauded by the press as the most talented of the race. For three decades, he toured extensively, performing in every black educational institution performing in every black educational institution and a significant number of churches. He also played in performance halls across the country to white audiences. Now imagine that. He performed for several U.S. presidents, including William McKinley, Teddy Roosevelt, and Howard Taft. By 1910, he was often booked at Carnegie Hall. He appeared at the Grand Military Concert sponsored by the U.S. Marine Band in Washington to commemorate the presidential inauguration of Grover Cleveland. For family members, he often played slave spirituals that he learned as a child. In 1914, he made recordings for the Victor Talking Machine Company, a record company and phonograph manufacturer, Headquartered in, headquartered in New Jersey. He was the first violinist ever to do so, but the recordings, unfortunately, were never released. Huh. Douglas was also an educator and conductor 
holding tenured positions at Howard University in Washington, D.C., and the Colored Music Settlement School in New York City. Among his students was Clarence Cameron White, an African-American neuromantic composer and concert violinist. He, he was married to Fanny Howard Douglas, who was a musician as well. She often, she often accompanied her husband's performances on the piano. The couple had two children, Blanche and Frederick III. On his death in 1935, his wife donated his violin, a copy of the German Stradivarius, to the U.S. Department of the Interior. Mr. Bridgerton of the Interior. Now, he was not the only famous virtuoso violinist. There was George Augustus Paul Green Bridgewater. Uh, he was George Augustus Paul Green Bridgewater, born 1778, and he died in 1860. He was a British musician of African descent. He was a virtuoso violinist who lived in England for much of his life. His playing impressed, how about this, Beethoven, who made him the original deductee of his Krautzer Sonata after they presented its world premiere performance. And most recently, y'all, we have violinist Ty Murray, an African-American described by the Philadelphia Inquirer as a violinist with more than technique on her mind and a, and a musician of exceptional assurance and style. She is the winner of the 2004 Avery Fisher Career Grant. She has appeared in recital with major ensembles around the world. You might want to Google Ty Murray and see more about her. All right, then. Thank you for listening to Once Upon a Time in Black History. Remember, if you're interested in purchasing books about Black history, you can find a great selection at my bookstore, the multiculturalbookstore.com. Thanks again. My name is Tamara Shiloh, and see you next time.